Good morning, sixth graders. It is Monday, October 26th, and let's get started on our math. So we'll begin in prayer. Make sure you have all of your materials. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Loving God, we ask you to protect all who have been affected by the wildfires in Colorado this fall. Bring your peace to those who have been evacuated or have lost their home. Protect all of the firefighters as they continue their courageous act of service. And please bring abundant moisture to our parched land so that these devastating fires may be extinguished. We ask this in your name, amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. So I'm actually, I'm praying that by the time you're watching this video, we have a lot of snow. Um, I'm recording these a few days before you actually watch them. Um, and so right now it's still very dry and windy. Um, and I live up in Northern Colorado, very, actually pretty close to the Cameron Peak fire. So um, I know lots of people who have been evacuated and, and are really suffering right now because of these fires. And so I just ask that you keep um, all of the people that live in Northern Colorado and along the Front Range um, in your prayers this week as they um, hopefully we get some some relief from these fires and and they can hopefully eventually go home and, and have a home still there because I know many have burned. So um, with that, let's get to our math for the week. Here is your warm up. Go ahead and solve these three problems. Um, pause the video, solve the problems on your own. It's very important that you practice these problems and um, and then come back and I will solve them with you and we'll get on with today's lesson. Okay, so um, these are the three warm up problems I gave you. Um, number one is an integer subtraction problem. And remember the first step when we solve an integer subtraction problem is to turn it into an addition problem. So this becomes negative 55 plus a positive 80. So instead of subtracting a negative 80, we add the opposite, so we add a positive 80. And now I'm gonna solve this like an integer addition problem, but I'm adding integers with unlike signs. So that means I subtract the two numbers and then the bigger number to start with is the sign that we will keep at the end. So if I look at this, I say, okay, 80 is bigger than 55. So my answer is going to be positive. And I'm gonna subtract 80 minus 55. This becomes a seven, I end up with 25 and it's positive because the 80 was bigger than the 55, okay? Number two um, is a simplifying an expression, and I put some distributive property in there. I know that's a concept that's a little bit tricky. And so when I look at that, I see I've got um, five times the quantity of x plus four, and so I need to do the distributive property on that. And so that five gets multiplied by both of the numbers inside of the parentheses. And so I end up with five times x is five x plus five times four, is 20, and then I have that plus six off to the side, so I keep that. And now I can simplify by combining like terms. I've got a 20 and a six, those are both constants, they're both like terms, and there's nothing I can combine with a 5x, it's the only x term. So it just stays the way it is. I've got 5x plus 20 plus six is 26, okay? All right, and then number three was a one-step addition equation. We just learned about these last week. And remember, the goal of solving an equation is to get x by itself. In order to get x by itself, I have to subtract 12 on both sides. These cancel, and I'm left with x equals 35 minus 12, which is 23, and I'm done. Okay, so those are your warm-up problems. Really, really good problems. Um, make sure you understand those. And we, you know, we're gonna keep seeing problems like these in the warm-ups. Talk to your tutor if you need a little bit more practice um, with these and, um, or send me an email. I can send you additional problems to work on as well if you want more practice. Um, but this, again, these are super important problems, things that you really need to understand how to do as we keep moving forward, okay? All right, let's get to our lesson. 
All right, so just as a reminder, in your math notebook, you should add today's objective, write down today's objective. Our essential question is the same. You don't have to write that one again. Um, we are just continuing to look at how we use mathematical symbols to solve real world problems involving numbers. We are, this whole unit is about understanding how we translate between English and math and how we use that, those math symbols and those, that the way we write math to help us solve those problems. Today, we're moving on to something new. So last week, we solved one-step addition equations at the end of the week. And today, we're going to solve one-step subtraction equations. And so I want you to make sure and get that objective written in your notes, because that's what today's topic is all about, solving one-step subtraction equations. All right, and I'll get my whiteboard up. Okay, so last week at the end of the week, we were solving one step addition equations. And so that would be something like X um, plus three equals six. Okay, remember an addition equation is an equation where something's being added to X. And we solved that by using inverse operations. And so if something's being added to X, the way I get X by itself is to subtract what was being added to X. And so I subtract three on both sides. And remember, whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other side. We wanna keep it balanced. Think about the seesaw that we drew, okay? And so if I add three, but then take away three, then it's gone. And so I'm left with just X. And on the other side, six minus three is three. And so again, I want to really emphasize this was an addition equation. Okay. And we solved by subtraction. Okay, so addition equations are solved by subtraction. Those are inverse operations. We talked about that last week. So today we're doing subtraction equations and let's look at one. I've got x minus five equals 10. This is a subtraction equ equation. Okay, and the way I know that is I think in my head, what's being done to x? I'm subtracting five. So how do I get x by itself? Well, again, subtraction and addition are inverse operations. They cancel each other out. So if I started with a subtraction equation, I will solve it by using addition. It's just the, the opposite of what we did last week. And so, so X has five being taken away. To get back to zero, it's kind of like I've dug a hole, okay? I've dug a hole like five inches deep and I want to get it flat again. Well, I do that by adding the sand back in. It's like being on the beach, right? And so I've subtracted five. So to solve for X, I'm going to add five on both sides. If I take away five and then add five, I'm back at zero, okay? Think of it that way. Think of it as I'm on the beach, okay? And I've dug a hole and I need to add back into the hole to make it flat again, okay? So it, with the subtraction equations, it's kind of hard to use the seesaw as an analogy because we haven't added something to the seesaw. We've actually like taken away first and that's our balance. So to get it back to even, we have to add back in. Okay, so if I solve this one, if I take away five, but then add five, I'm left with just X. And then remember, whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side. So since I added five on the left side, I have to add five on the right side. 10 plus five is 15. And I'm done. Now, I should check it, especially here at the beginning when you're just learning how to do these, let's check. So let's go back to our original equation. X minus five equals 10. Well, I figured out that X is equal to 15. So let's plug in 15. 15 minus five equals 10, maybe. Well, 15 minus five does equal 10. 10 equals 10, check, it works. Okay, we're gonna do a whole bunch of examples, okay? Let's do x minus six equals two. 
So it's a subtraction equation. I solve subtraction equations by adding. Hang on a second, my cat is driving me crazy. I'm gonna let her into my office here. Okay, just beware, she might jump up on my desk here in a minute. All right, so again, a subtraction equation. X minus six equals two. What's being done to X? I'm subtracting six. So to solve the equation, to get X by itself, I need to add six to both sides. If I subtract six and then add six, I'm back at zero. So X equals, and then two plus six is eight. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do X minus three equals 12. Oh, there she is. My little kitty cat, come on, move, move. Okay, X minus three equals 12. So what's being done to X? I'm subtracting three. So to solve for X, I need to add three on both sides. If I take away three and add three, I'm at zero. So X equals 12 plus three is 15. Okay. All right, now we're gonna do some that have some negative numbers in there, which makes things a little bit trickier. Okay, you just have to take your time and follow each step. Let's do X minus two equals negative 10. Okay, it's still a subtraction equation. What's being done to X? I'm subtracting two. To get X by itself, I need to add two to both sides. If I subtract two and add two, they cancel each other out and I'm left with just X. Now I've got negative 10 plus two. Okay, I just wrote it horizontally. It's the same problem there. And so I have to think about the rules for adding integers. So I'm adding unlike signs. So I have to subtract the numbers and then the answer will be the sign of the bigger number. So X equals, well, 10, min 10 minus two is eight. 10 was bigger than two, so the answer is negative eight. Okay, take your time on these. Let's do another one. Let's do negative four equals X minus 14. Okay, I wrote this one backwards and you've gotta be careful on that because remember we have to look at what number is being subtracted from X. What's being done to X? I'm subtracting 14. And so I'm going to add 14 to both sides, okay? Sometimes I see students wanna add that four just because it was on the other side of the equation. You have to make sure that you're adding the number that's being subtracted from X. We're trying to get X by itself. That's the whole goal of solving these equations. So if I subtract 14 and then add 14 there, they cancel each other out and I'm left with X equals, and now on the other side I have negative four plus 14. Okay, just like that last problem, I'm adding numbers with unlike signs. And so I have to subtract the two numbers. Well, 14 minus four is 10. And my answer will be positive because 14 was bigger than negative four. Okay. And let me just double check here. I think that's all we're gonna do today. Yes. Okay, so let's recap. We have subtraction equations and we're solving them by adding. Okay, it's just the opposite of what we did last week. When you have an addition equation, you solve with subtraction. When you set, have a subtraction equation, you solve with addition. So let's get your homework assignment up. All right, so your assignment is a worksheet. Um, there are 18 problems and I want you to do them all. Um, they are not real hard ones. I don't think, I'm trying to think here. You don't have any that even have negative numbers in them, okay? So all of your answers are gonna end up positive. Let me double check that, make sure I'm not saying something that's not true. Nope, they are all. So they're all gonna end up positive. This should be a great assignment for you to build some confidence in solving these subtraction equation problems, okay? Tomorrow we're gonna do more subtraction equations. Um, and we're just going to keep building 
on, on this concept. So um, take your time, work on the assignment tonight, talk to your tutor about any of the concepts that you don't understand. Um, and that's it. And I'll look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow. So let's um, end in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.